Hey everyone, my name is Vindanin and in this video we're going to build a powered social media content generator using Langraph and the Grok API. We're going to turn technical content into engaging social media posts for Twitter and LinkedIn using AI agents system. Let's get started. If you want to follow along, there is a complete text tutorial that is available for ML Expert Pro subscribers and this is within the bootcamp and then down here under projects write social media content with agents here you can find the complete text tutorial along with a link to the google co-op notebook and all of the source code that i'm going to show you throughout this video so if you want to support my work please consider subscribing to ml expert pro thank you this is a simplified diagram of how our execution flow is going to work here we have some row text that we're going to be passing into our system and from there we're going to be passing that text to an editor and the job of the editor is going to be to essentially rewrite all of the information that we're passing in into a nice and coherent text that is suitable for further improvement then from there we're going to continue by branching out the graph to two different writers in this case we're going to have one specific writer for LinkedIn and then one specific writer for Twitter. Then after those writers are done, we're going to be passing this to a supervisor or a watcher. And from here, the watcher is going to essentially decide whether or not this text is complete or the tweet and the LinkedIn post are complete. And if not, it is going to pass the information to a LinkedIn critic and then tweet critic. After those agents are done with their work, they're going to pass in the feedback to the LinkedIn writer and tweet writer respectively. And then the watcher is going to again decide whether or not this is a complete for the whole system and then return the result once this feedback and this loop is actually complete to the user. So note that compared to previous tutorials that we've seen thus far, here we have a loop or even two loops within the graph. And since a uh, lang graph is allowing us to execute in parallel different branches, here you see that these are actually executed in parallel. And this is a significant speed up compared to if you have only sequential execution. So this is a nice point from Langraph. For our system, we are going to be needing just two dependencies. These are the Langchain Grok library, which we're going to be using with the 3.1 70 billion parameter model. And then the latest version of Langraph. This is the one that is using the latest version of Langchain as well, which is 0.3, I believe, which was very recently introduced. And on top of that, I'm going to be upgrading pip just in case that I have the latest dependencies right here. So the setup is pretty simple. We have a wall of imports, which we're going to be using throughout this tutorial. But other than that, I'm seeding the random number generator. This is essentially a good practice that I often do. And then specifying the model. The setup for the model is pretty simple. We're going to be using a temperature of zero for reproducibility. And then the API key, uh, which is going to be stored into my Google Club notebook, but actually you can go to console.grok.com and take your API key. For this tutorial, you definitely fit within the free tier of the API. So for the agents that I've shown you, each of the nodes that I've have thus far, you see that we have a lot of prompts and a lot of terms and uh, ways how they should phrase their text and what should they do. So I'm not going to go throughout all of the text for the prompts, but you can go on that on your own when you're reading the tutorial. So the more important stuff here is that I'm specifying what I want from each agent as clearly as possible and as specifically as possible. So for example, here for the Twitter prompt, I want an explanation of what is the problem that I'm solving, what are the main technical points and features, 
write a short paragraph. I want the tweets to be short. Natural conversational language. Optimize for vir virality. Make it intriguing, relatable, or conversational. Or controversial, sorry. And I don't want any emojis or hashtags within my tweets. That's a personal preference. You can, of course, change that. Here uh, we have pretty much the same specific requirements that I want from my agents when the critique is actually having a look at the written tweet and then providing feedback for a possible rewrite. So I want quality, a hook, something that grabs attention for the reader. Brevity, I want this to be as short as possible. Call to action, do something or share the tweet. What tone do I like? etc. So uh, for the LinkedIn, I also have something similar, but this is the place that you can essentially specify what types of text you want for the different platforms. So for example, Twitter or tweets are very different to LinkedIn posts. If you're uh, working on both platforms, you probably already know that. LinkedIn is essentially capable of writing much more long form content. And for that case, my LinkedIn prompt for the agent and the LinkedIn critique prompts are vastly different compared to the tweet ones. And we'll see whether or not the actual agent output is going to be significantly different. So for the graph itself, I have a very simple upstate which I'm going to be using user text. This is going to be the initial raw text that I'm going to be passing in. Then I want a specific a specific target audience that all of the agents are going to take into account when I'm writing the text. This is the edit text. So this is the text that the editor is going to give us. Then we have a tweet and this will be an instance of pedantic post. So a very cool thing about this lang graph setup right here and the lang chain grok extension is that you can essentially output the type of model that you want from the LOM. And I'll show you how you can do that in a bit. So each post is going to be a couple of drafts. This is going to be a list. So this will be a dynamic, essentially list or array of drafts. And then the latest feedback that we have for this post. I'm not going to be storing all the feedbacks, but probably you might extend this in and uh, create the feedbacks into a list if you want to. I have the same instance for the LinkedIn post. So I'm essentially reusing this pedantic model and then the number of drafts that I want for each post. So this is will be something that we are going to be passing in as a user to this system. So here are the notes or the definitions of the agents themselves. We have the editor. The editor is pretty simple. It uses the editor prompt and this is passed in as a system message. And then the prompt is pretty simple. The text that I want this to be written or rewritten as. And this will be the raw text that we're going to be passing in as a user. And then as a response, I'm going to return the edit text and this will essentially fill in this part of our state right here. So this is thanks to the Langraph implementation that we're using. Then for the tweet writer note, you will see that if we don't have feedback, I'm not going to incorporate any feedback within the prompt, but if feedback is available, I'm going to take the latest draft and then I'm going to be using the feedback to improve it. So this will be if we already have written a single version and went through the critique and then what is going to be the new draft version compared to uh, or according to the feedback. And then for the prompt is going to be pretty simple. And then we're going to be inputting the feedback prompt. And one important thing right here is that we are also using the target audience, which is going to be again passed in as an parameter to this, write only the text for the post. So this is something that I try to uh, engage with the users. So they're uh, with agents that only is returning the text for the post, but not nothing else, since I don't want to spend the tokens 
that I want on this. And after the response is complete, I'm going to append this as another draft and return the new tweet or the new post that we have this far. The same thing is happening for the LinkedIn post. This is actually exactly the same, but I'm comparing or adding a draft to the LinkedIn post and updating the state right here. So for the critique agents, this will be very simple. We have the full or the original post from the editor. Then I'm going to be adding the latest draft and then the target audience along with the system prompt right here. And I'm going to be incorporating this feedback right here to the post. Exactly the same thing for the LinkedIn, suggested LinkedIn post. And the supervisor note is going to be empty. I know this is a bit of a shocker maybe for you, but we'll see how we are going to be incorporating the logic for the conditional calling, if you will. So this will be done essentially via the edge that is going to be called a function that is going to be essentially a function that we call should rewrite. And here you will see that this function either ends or calls the LinkedIn critique or tweet critique. So this works pretty simple, actually. I'm going to take the tweet and the LinkedIn post and the number of drafts that we've already written. And if both of the drafts are actually equal or larger than the number of drafts that we want, I'm going to be ending the execution of our graph. Otherwise, I'm going to be continuing to the critique for the tweet and the critique for the LinkedIn post. Pretty simple. It works quite well. And we'll see how well actually in a bit. So here I have all of the nodes. I'm adding those up, uh, including the supervisor node. And this is essentially a dummy node. I'm going to show you why this is actually needed. If you know a better way of doing this, please let me know down in the comments. I've looked through the documentation, but probably this is the, this is the only way that I found to implement these types of logic. Probably there are some smarter way to do this. So I'm essentially next adding the edges and I'm going to show you the diagram, which probably is going to be explaining a bit of what is happening, but it might also uh, misguide you further. So from the start, we're always going to the editor and from the editor, we are going to the LinkedIn writer and the tweet writer. So here are the paths from the supervisor, which are not exactly correct. We've seen that the supervisor can only lead to the LinkedIn critique and the tweet critique. So this is essentially wrong. But after the writer, we're going always to the supervisor, no matter which writer, and then going to the critique and then uh, doing the cycle again. After the number of drafts are complete, we're going to be going to the state, uh, the end state of the graph. Yeah, this is a bit complicated if you look through it, but uh, it will make sense once the execution is complete. So here is how I'm adding the edges and the conditional edge from the supervisor to the shoot rewrite. And this is why you see all of those arrows pretty much every other node within the graph. And finally, I'm setting the entry point to the editor. So the start is actually pointing to the editor. And finally, I'm compiling this graph and I'm creating the compilation, the compiled graph and app variable. So how do we use this? You see that I have a thread ID. This is so that the graph is actually recalling the memory, which uh, you might want to use if you're essentially chatting with the graph, which is something that we are not going to do right now. We're going to just do a single execution. And this is the text. This is a combination of posts and hugging face uh, readme file about Mistral Small. This is the 22 billion parameter model that was recently released by the Mistral company and with some nice explanations on what does it have. 22 billion parameters, 128k sequence length, and uh, it supports function calling. I'm not really sure if this model is very good, 
but uh, something that I don't like about it already, you might sell the point if for non-commercial purposes. So for commercial purposes, this model is not a viable option. And then these are the parameters that I'm passing in, the user text, the target audience. So here I'm saying AML engineers and researchers uh, dot or uh, comma data scientists. Then I'm passing in the post for the tweet and the LinkedIn post along with the number of drafts that I want. And you see that the execution of the complete graph takes about 15 seconds, which is quite good, but the Grok API is very fast, so keep that in mind. And here is the edited text. Exciting news introducing Mr. Osmo. Hi everyone, I've got some awesome news to share with you all. Our team has just released Mistral, a game-changing model that's about to take your AI experience to the next level. So you already can see that the editor have added a lot of text or a lot of fluff within the text right here. And if you want to change that, you can, of course, go to the editor prompt and tune that. And then we're going to have a look at the different drafts for the tweet. I uh, recall that we wanted three different drafts. And here they are, introducing Mr. Osmo, a 22 billion parameter model that strikes the perfect balance between cost effectiveness and performance. So this is the first version. The second one, what if you could achieve state-of-the-art AI performance without breaking the bank, introducing Mr. Osmo. And then the third one, unlock AI performance on a budget, introducing Mr. Osmo, a 22 billion parameter model that delivers significant improvements in human alignment and supports function calling. Okay, so you can see that the three different versions are actually very very different and if you build for example a ui application with that you might possibly give the three different drafts for the user to choose from and probably post some of those or edit some of those uh, yeah and do let me know if you want to com to convert something like this into a full project for example with a react and put everything of this behind an API that we can actually call and build a complete application out of it. So here is the feedback to the, I recall that this is to the draft number two, tweet critique. Uh, it is providing clarity, hook, brevity, call to action, remove hype, storytelling, etc. Make the hook more specific, focus on key benefit, add a clear to call to action. Okay, so the critique looks pretty good. And then for the LinkedIn posts, here the drafts are going to be significantly longer. The first draft is revolutionizing AI with Mistral Small. Are you struggling to find a cost-effective solution that balances performance and deployment flexibility? And here you can see the different parameters, etc., that we've already specified. And for the next version, unlocking AI potential with Mistral Small, Mistral Small. Again, a bit different. And then unlocking AI potential with Mr. Small. Uh, pretty much the same title. Are you struggling to find cost effective solutions? Uh, here, let me see. Actually, this is pretty much unchanged. Uh, but here, the second benefit uh, is looking to be a lot different. Yeah, probably the second benefit. And then the final text looks also a bit different. Uh, let's have a look at the feedback. Here we have original post analysis and then suggested post analysis. This is a much larger analysis, something that you can probably tune with your prompt and get even better result. And this is pretty much how you can tune your social media posts using uh, Langraph and AI agents. This is it for this video. We've seen how you can convert some technical content into social media posts for both Twitter and LinkedIn. You've seen how you can do all of that using a Langraph and AI agents using the Llama 3.1 model. If you like this video, please like, share and subscribe. Also join the Discord channel that I'm going to link down into the description of this video. And if you want to support my work, please consider subscribing to ML Expert Pro. Thank you and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.